Welcome to this video on writing paragraphs. This video is part of our series on thesis writing tips. Using the paragraph as the foundation of writing will really help you to organize your ideas and to write clearly. The paragraph consists of a number of sentences that relate to each other and this is what makes it so useful. In other words, the sentences are linked together as a coherent unit. So instead of working at the sentence level, working at the paragraph le level helps us to develop a kind of coherency to our writing. So here's how it works. The first step is to work out the purpose of the paragraph. For example, to explain a concept from one, per one author's perspective, to describe a process or a context, to persuade a reader uh, about an argument, to provide background information and so on. That's the main purpose. So by figuring out the purpose of the paragraph, it will help you to keep your ideas focused. So once you have the purpose clear, the next step is to, to work out the main point you want to make in that paragraph and to write that down. So what is this paragraph about? Now that you have your purpose clear, what is the point you want to make in this paragraph? Step three is to then elaborate on that main point. So how will you explain the main point? Will you use examples? details from your source articles, data from your data collection, or descriptions. And in the sentences that follow, expand on this main point, provide elaboration. And you could even use numbering to help organize your thoughts. One, two, three, first, second, third, A, B, C. Step four is in the final sentences of the paragraph, make sense of the main point for your reader. So this is about not assuming that your reader knows what you mean just by making the main point. So make sense of it so that you're providing your reader with insight and then link to the next paragraph. Now the links to the next paragraph can be written in, in, in revision rounds later on, but when you're generating the paragraph, don't worry about the links. Come back later on in a later draft and fill those, those links in. So let's have a look at an example here. Yeah, before we go to the example, let's have a look at what goes into a paragraph again. So you have a purpose, a main point, an explanation of the main point, a final sentence that makes sense of the main point for the reader, and you have a link to the next paragraph. Now on to the example. Most academic writing is framed around an argument because academic knowledge is often contested. In other words, there are disagreements about, among academics about what we understand and value as knowledge. As a result of this contestation, academic writing is almost always focused around creating an argument and persuading an audience. The more convinced the audience is of the argument, the more truth-like the argument becomes. The less convinced the audience, the more opinion-like the argument is. Understanding the contested nature of knowledge will help readers understand why arguments are important in these contexts. So there we have a short paragraph, it's not a long paragraph, but it has all these components. A, a purpose, a main point, an elaboration of the main point, and then making sense of the main point for the reader.
So let's unpack this paragraph and have a look at how it works. So most academic writing is framed around an argument because academic knowledge is often contested. That's the first sentence. And this is the main point of the paragraph. An adding of source shows the reader that although I think this, other people also think this way. So the next sentence, in other words, there are disagreements among academics about what we understand and value as knowledge. So this is an elaboration of what is meant by contested. And I used in other words to link back to that main point. So here you see the beginnings of the elaboration, but it is linked to the main point. As a result of this contestation, academic writing is almost always focused around creating an argument and persuading an audience. So again, it links back to the main point, the main argument of the paragraph, and I used as a result as another transitional device. Now you don't want to overuse these transitional devices, you want to use them sparingly to help you link. The more convinced the audience is of the argument, the more truth-like the argument becomes. The less convinced of the argument, the more opinion-like the argument is. Explaining more about arguments and showing the nature of contested knowledge is further elaboration on the main point. And the source again shows that although I think this, others do too. So that's evidence for my argument. So can you see how this paragraph makes a point, explains the point, elaborates a bit more and then makes sense of it for the reader. So as you write your paragraph, ask yourself, what, what does my reader need to know and, and to understand my point in this paragraph? What examples can I provide from the literature to help explain what I mean? Is there specific information or data that I need to add to convince my reader? What sources or quotes from the literature will help provide evidence? So once you have a paragraph, joining several paragraphs together can make a coherent section. So let's have a look. So the first paragraph here is a paragraph we've already been through. And you'll see that the last sentence, which makes sense of the main point of that paragraph, has arguments in it and that links to what is an argument in the next sentence. So that provides the link between both those paragraphs. The basic components of an argument are one, two, three. Then the rest of the paragraph elaborates those one, two, three points. And the final sentence, an academic writer needs to understand these three elements to write arguments in academic context. There you're making sense of the main points, what is an argument for the reader. So can you see how those two paragraphs build on one another and they are linked together through that question, what is an argument? Now there are lots of different variations on the paragraph and there are lots of different purposes. So you might have paragraphs of definition and this is probably where you you'll find these kinds of paragraphs in the literature review and you're posing several defini definitions of concepts against one another and coming up with a conclusion of, of which concept really convinces you. And then there might be analytical paragraphs where you break up a concept issue or process into its various components and discuss each in turn. You may evaluate the relationship between the components or use a compare and contrast strategy. And at the end of this, you might bring things together in a synthesis paragraph where you bring the components back together, but with insight provided from the analysis. So you can see how you could have several paragraphs here building into this section and this final paragraph. You might also have process paragraphs where the writer outlines various stages of a process in a step-by-step -step or chronological manner and here a problem solution strategy might be helpful.
So if you want to de develop coherence across the paragraphs, I would suggest using headings or subheadings and then group your paragraphs under those headings. And if you are in a discipline where headings are not really used, then take the headings out afterwards once you've finished your draft. But they are very helpful for um, allowing you to focus your thoughts under a particular heading. Use linking or transitional words such as as a result of, but you know, just a caution that you need to be careful not to use too many of these. Um, but these words will help the reader to see how your thoughts are organized and connected. Use signposting, such as each of these will be discussed in turn, and then the reader knows what's coming next. So signposts are these brief conversations you have with the reader where you explain what you intend to do or how you've organized the text. And then another strategy for coherence would be repetition of keywords. And this is where you would end the paragraph with one word and repeat it in the next word and that creates the link. And that's what we saw in the example with the word arguments. So just a quick word about the length and variety of lengths in a paragraph. The end of a paragraph is a pause for a reader, almost as if the reader takes a breath before continuing on. If you have a page long paragraph, your poor reader has to struggle through without getting a rest and will be out of breath. If your paragraphs are too short, like two or three sentences, then your reader is taking too many breaths and will hyperventilate. So you want to try and have an even pace, no more than half a page long paragraph and definitely not shorter than two to three sentences. So look for logical breaks when the discussion shifts or a new topic is introduced. And just think about your reader having that breath at the end of the paragraph. So let's look at the key points in this video. If you focus on each paragraph as described here, you will find that your writing is more focused and clear. And then joining paragraphs together into sections will create a coherence in your writing. So instead of focusing on sentences, the argument I'm making is that you need to focus on paragraphs to obtain this co coherence. I hope you enjoyed this video on writing paragraphs, which is part of our thesis writing tip series.